you want to reach some goals, surround yourself with people who care about you enough to tell you the truth and also support where you are going. So people are essential to where you want to go in life, especially your goals. Welcome to Be Bold Branding, where we discuss the power of differentiating yourself through your own unique story and standout personal brand. How big are your goals? When we think about tackling our big goals, well, we often overlook the small steps it takes to make it happen and the different areas of life we need to change to make those bigger goals come to life. Well, our guest today is the lovely Nina Perez. She's a podcaster and coach who helps women to challenge and transform their thinking while giving them new tools to think differently. Her main goal is to motivate them by transforming their thoughts because better thoughts lead to better actions and better actions lead to better results. Welcome back to Be Bold Branding, Nina. I am so glad to be here. You guys are like such cool people, so I am very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, thank you for saying that. We feel the same kind. way about you. Hey, so right off the bat, I know you've been our guest before on here, but you want to give us a little a quick reminder of your backstory and why you're doing what you're doing today? Yeah, sure. I mean, my backstory, as you know, is pretty long, right? So we'll cut it short. I've been through a lot of my life, and so I realized that my story of everything that I've overcome and everything that I've done is not for me anymore, but it's for others. And so that has really helped me to hone in on my personal development, you know, how I develop my mind flow. I call it mind flow, not mindset, my emotional intelligence, all that stuff. So I've worked really hard throughout the years to do all of that in my life. And then I've developed a system now where I help women also transcend their shame and unwanted behavior so that they can reach the goals that they're looking to have in their life. So you take what you've been through, those lemons, and you start making your little lemonade, you know? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you a real quick story. My mom's family, there were seven in that family, and they're now down to four. They've had some really tough, tough times in their life. Mm-hmm. And my mom and her sisters have the most positive, charming, sweet outlook ever. You yeah, know, they all love I'm Michael. Sure. They all think mm-hmm. Michael's their boyfriend. They are. So <laughs> They're all my girlfriend. <laughs> He's got I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, so they're such like positive, beautiful souls that I literally nicknamed them the Lemonade Sisters because they can take the lemons of life, any lemons of life, and literally make lemonade with it. So that has a special place in my heart too. Yeah. I love that. But I mean, you have to, right? So it's either that or suck on a sour lemon. And that's no fun for nobody. So we can't stay stuck in that state. You have to start putting some sugar to it and getting it, you know, getting yourself uh, sweetened up, even though something gave you sour stuff, you know? Yeah, exactly. And just a little tip toward, she just hinted toward her podcast, right? Her podcast is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. So you guys check that out whenever you get a chance. It's fantastic. All right. So you cover a topic that we believe is really important because as we said in the beginning of the podcast, when people have big goals, we tend to just want to skip over all those little things that we know have to take place in order to get to that big goal because it just seems a lot easier, right? But you actually talk about eight ways to arrange your life to get things done and reach your goals, which is a simple title But it's also, believe it or not, it's steps, but they're simple steps. And so we wanted to spend some time today digging into those a little bit. If you wouldn't mind, would you walk us through those eight, starting with number one? Sure. The first thing you have to do is define it. I mean, what is your goal, right? I think a lot of us just say, oh, yeah, I have have big goals and big aspirations. And then when you talk to them about what those goals are, they don't really know. They have an idea of what that would be like or feel like but they don't write anything down. And so when you don't write it down, you aim at nothing. You actually don't know what you're aiming at or doing. I think it's very, very important to define those goals and to write those goals, right? This is always going to be your first step. Success, honestly, rarely, if ever, happens by accident, right? It happens with a clear vision and clear intention. And you have to clarify really exactly what it is you want to happen and at what time frame you want this to happen. And you have to get detailed on how you hear it, see it, smell it, taste it, all the aspects of your life, because it is super vital that you really immerse yourself in what it is your goal is, right? So you become a part of that goal. Write it down, people. Write it down. 
Yeah. Yes. You sound like me when I tell our students, write it down, people. <laughs> because, you know, just a, another quick story. Like, I love meeting with you because it just reminds me of all these stories of like my own journey. And several years ago, I'm rummaging through my closet and I find in this Rubbermaid container a notebook. And I pull a piece of paper out of it. And on one side of the notebook, it says personal goals. On the flip side, it says professional goals. And I can't remember which side this was on, but I had written down all of those goals. There were probably 10 or 12 goals on each side. And I had not seen this notebook in at least three to five years. And I just pulled it out. And one of them said, it's time to write a book. And by that time, I had written four that's Good. How powerful <laughs> those are. And you know, it wasn't yeah. even the in the forefront of my mind. It wasn't the most important thing for me to do. It was just one of those things. I understood then the power of writing it down, even when it's not in great detail. But when it is in great detail, you're not going to miss your goals. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. And I think there's something powerful to be said with pen to paper. There's something super powerful about that. Um, I'm sure there's a science behind it with the brain, you know, uh, but there's something very powerful when you are literally writing with your own hand, you know, on a piece of paper, not just on a computer or on a text, but actually physically writing it. So I highly always recommend that. I always tell people, grab a journal and a pen, get old school with me, go ahead and start writing, you know, so I, it's just powerful. It connects you to it. Yeah, it does. I agree with that hundred percent. What about number two? What do we need to do with that? thing about goals, right, or aspirations and things you want to accomplish in your life is you should be surrounding yourself with supportive people. There should be a tribe around you. And I'm not saying a yes tribe. I don't want those people. You know what I'm saying? I don't need right. you to stroke my ego. We don't need that. I could probably do that all on my own. So <laughs> you have to make good choices in the people that you surround yourself with. I mean, it is true when they say, you know, if you show me the five people you surround yourself with, I can, you know, tell you who you are. There's some truth to that. So you should be able to have people around you that you can spend time with, that you can actually speak to about, you know, your purposes uh, in your life, the things that you want to accomplish, the things that you want to do and have that honest feedback. Right. So I build a tribe of women that I always connect with and I believe in a feedback loop. I believe in putting something out and getting that feedback right back to me like, oh, that's not good or I didn't understand this. Can you fix that? Maybe tweak that. That's a good thing. And I trust these women, they're professionals, they're leaders, and they've earned my respect, right? And so you want to reach some goals, surround yourself with people who care about you enough to tell you the truth and also support where you are going. So people are essential to where you want to go in life, especially your goals. Another sidebar. I promise I'm going to let Michael talk, but I get excited about this. Okay, so this here's a sidebar that Michael is very much a part of. We just completed our first mastermind called Profitable Brand Mastermind. And it was the first time we brought people together in a group setting to actually build their personal brand. And that's really where I realized how important having the right people around you really is. Not just to say, oh, you look great in that shirt. That photo is fantastic. What a great tagline. You know, it's not all those things. It's like, yeah, but if you said it this way, I'm going to get a little confused. But if you say it this way, I'm really clear on what you're trying to achieve, right? So it's people chiming in in a real way, in a very honest way. And being the cheerleading support system around you as well. Everybody wants to see you succeed in that setting. And most especially because there are no direct competitors in the space. Right. So you feel free and you feel like you're being supported with that. And I know we literally just saw the effects of what you just talked about. Yeah, it yeah. was smashing success because you had the ideals of masterminds. Mm -hmm. And like you said, not Love it. in a competitive way, but then they were free to be completely open to your success. And it was really worked out good, which actually sort of a transition to number three, accountability. I would think that that has something to do with people too. A hundred percent, but also to yourself. I think one of the biggest things that people struggle with the most is accountability to themselves. We let ourselves off the hook a little too much, mm -hmm. right? And we don't have anybody to really tell us that that's wrong because we're doing it to ourselves. So it is super important that you have a group of people that you are accountable to, but also to yourself. Be the type of person that keeps your word to yourself. Mm -hmm. I know that for me, that's something I even, you know, struggled with as a youth, right? It was about keeping my word to everybody else. Like if I promised to go to an event or if I promised to volunteer, if I promised to do that. But when it came to me 
and I made promises, I broke them all the time, right? Going to the gym is a big example, right? Or whatever that promise was I made to myself. And I've realized now, you know, being older, being in, in personal development, you know, having the successes I have in my life has really come from buckling down and being accountable, not just to everyone, but to myself. And when you start breaking promises to yourself, what happens is, is that you automatically start to develop this pattern in your brain where you don't think you can do it. Here comes imposter syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. All these other things because you think I can't do it. And it's not that you can't do it. It's that you've broken so many promises to yourself. You don't trust yourself anymore. Now, if somebody did that to you where they're promising you they're going to do something for you and they don't do it, the next time they say it, you ain't going to pay attention to that, right. right? That person is not accountable. But if you're accountable to everyone else, you can do that same strategic thing to be accountable to yourself, even when you don't want to, you're going to see a big change in your life and you're going to reach goals you never thought you could reach because you finally put your behind to the test and did what you said you were going to do, right? Yeah, I like that. That's a big turning point, I think, mm -hmm. because we do hear, and I did the same thing right then when I said accountability. I made the assumption it was other people holding mm -hmm. you accountable, which is very important. But mm -hmm. you're right. We have to hold ourselves accountable. If we can just say, oh, I, I'm going to start working out on Monday, and then Monday comes and we don't start working out, then we've lied to ourselves. Right. And that's really, I can see that being a very powerful part of the eight steps because we can't do that. We should not utter a vow that we don't keep even to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we do it all the time. We do. We should do it habitually. Yeah. 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 And then you wonder why you don't trust yourself to do certain things, you know. And I did it with, I could give an example here where I did it with my rest day. You know, we are workaholics and for years we have been that. And there've been many a year that we work seven days a week. And then I remembered the Sabbath and I was like, you know what? We got to take a day off, like period, every week, every seven day period, we have to have a day off to refresh ourselves. And then I actually moved it to dusk on Friday to dusk on Saturday. And I, I, I don't do nothing. Like I, we don't, I don't do anything like we yeah. read Good. books, you know, or lay up by the pool or whatever, but I don't even think about business during those hours. Uh, and and I've had some, I've had some very important phone calls hit during that time frame, and I'll talk to them on Sunday or Monday. And, you know, the funny thing is I've never missed anything by doing that. Yeah. One thing. That's so good. Yeah. But you've also kept a promise to yourself. Yep. To your important partner, to your energy, to, what you know, all of that. And you've kept that promise. And that shows us, all of us, right, that we can all do that. Because okay. there's a lot of times that we will keep promises to ourselves, right? right. And, but there are many times when something is hard, that's when we don't want to. But that's because we've already conditioned our brain. Oops, hard, not wanting to do that. Break a promise, you know, break a promise. And then we have this ugly pattern in our lives. Where we're not reaching the monuments or the moments or those goals that we have in our life that we can't reach them or we think we can't reach them because we've already programmed ourselves to think we can't. So accountability, huge. Make it happen. I like it. Which slides very easily right into this next one that seems to be a problem for almost everybody I know, which is diet. And diet is not a diet, I'm sure. It's just what is our diet? It's so easy to fail yourself when you keep thinking about, oh my gosh, I need this ingredient and that ingredient. I need all these things to be able to eat right and to eat clean and take care of myself. And then it happens to be the very last thing you even feel like you have time to think about throughout the day. So True. what's your advice on that one? Well, on diet, I thought of it as different things, right? So diet definitely, you know, if you want to run a marathon, it's going to be a different diet than someone who's going to do bodybuilding, right? Those are two different diets, two different things. So it's about knowledge as well and about whatever you're consuming, not just in food, in your eyes, in your ears, mm -hmm. right? What are you consuming? What are you watching? What's the diet that you're feeding on, right? Are you watching too much media? Is it making you angry and bitter and wrong? You're like, like feeling like everything's wrong in your life, right? Are you listening to too much bad things happening out there or bad words or whatever it is, right? I'm just thinking about what we consume as people, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to realize that if you're trying to get to a goal in your life that is different than where you are today, that means your diet, your ear gates, your eye gates, your mouth, all of that is going to matter, right? So the marathon is for one diet, the bodybuilding is for another diet, you're reaching your goals and having this aspiration that you have is another diet. And you have to be careful about what you're consuming in everything, food, watching, listening, all of it, 
right? And so if you want to experiment with different things because this particular diet didn't work for this particular thing, that's okay. You can do that. But when I say diet, that's what I mean. I mean, what are you consuming? Yeah. yeah. What are you consuming? Because a lot of times we're not reaching our diet and it has nothing to do with our ability to or our ability not to. It has a lot to do with what we have been feeding ourselves. Yeah. Diet. Agree with, as a thousand percent, I agree with that. Another example, we just got back from a skiing trip in Utah. On the plane, I was watching Richard Branson's biography. It's like a four or five part series about his life a little bit. And he's talking about it. Like I was energized instantly to get back to work. Not that we don't work, but you know, I just felt really like anything was possible, right? Oh, because I can yeah, see, yeah. you know, an icon that sort of proves to the world, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. And that was very energized and watching and inspired. that. So, inspired. Right. So I like right. that. Not just food consumptions. What else are you consuming? Yep. Right. Yep. I mean, so you can just use that as an example to watching something on the media that's feeding you a bunch of garbage, right? So right. I'm just using media because that's the one thing everybody's doing right now is consuming Netflix and media and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So news is what I mean. So you have to, you know, like look at the difference, right? Look at the difference between, you know, maybe having anxiety or depression or anger because you're listening to this or being ready to crush your stuff that you have to do at work, right? There's mm -hmm. such a difference and we have to pay attention to that. You have to pay attention. It is hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that rolls right into the next thing, which is your sleep. What you consume oh, directly affects your sleep. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so sleep. I put this on the list because for me, and I think for many, many people, you know, lack of sleep is a big thing, right? It causes issues with mental health, with your physical health, with autoimmune conditions. You know, I'm somebody who's admittedly said that I have insomnia, you know, so I will sleep on an average of four hours a night, right? And I've been like that since I was a child. It comes from trauma, but that's where it comes from. And I realized that you have to realize what is your optimal amount of sleep for you. I know that there's studies that say, you know, between seven and eight hours, and some of them say between six and seven hours. So everybody's different. I actually thrive, believe it or not, on five hours, four to five hours. I'm good, you know, but I've been like that all my life where somebody else will sleep five hours and they think their whole world has come to an end, right? It's not long to be me. Yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so what what is the optimal amount of sleep for you and you might find that you have to figure that rhythm out for yourself and then that will help you start to pursue your goals a little bit more effectively if you get the amount of sleep that your body needs that you need to be able to kill it when you wake up in the morning right crush that morning and that's the most important thing so most people seven to eight hours is very very good for them if i sleep eight hours i wake up like i'm drunk it's too much for me mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. we're all very different figure that out so that you can start to really because if you're somebody who doesn't sleep well and then you wake up you're not crushing your goals i'm sorry you're not you're, you're gonna get through some of them but you're not gonna be at your optimal you're not right yeah. so this is super important if you're somebody who's trying to get through some goals is also get some sleep. That is part of this. Yeah, for sure. And then what about time? Number six. Huh, time. Do we have enough of it? I don't know. I never. Um, <laughs> no, I feel like the older I get, the more God is taking hours away. I'm not sure what's happening here. But if you're wasting time and this goes a, a lot with the consumption piece, right? If, you know, people tell me, oh, I don't have time. You don't have time. You literally just told me that you watched this whole series of XYZ. People don't usually like when I point out what they've already said, but they said it. it's not my fault, right? <laughs> so <laughs> you need to stop and ask yourself, am I wasting time? Is there something that's distracting my, I call them the little foxes, right? That come and steal the chickens, right? The little foxes that come and steal your time. And so what are those little foxes in your life that are coming into your life to steal the time? So is it Netflix? Is it texting? Is it TikTok? Is it Instagram? It, what is stealing your valuable, limited time. And that's something that you need to to really get a hold of if you want to chase after your goals. That's mm -hmm. just, there's no way around that. All of us get the same amount of hours. Nobody gets extra. Nobody, right? right. And so when people say, oh, I have extra time on my hands, you do not have extra time. You have time on your hands, mm -hmm. right? And so what right. you do 
can really give you time management. Now you can actually focus on the things you want to do, but you don't have extra because I've been asking God for extra time for years and it's not happening. I put it the same 24 hours, even though I've asked him for much longer days, you know, to help me do stuff. But <laughs> you need to track how you spend your time. And, and I mean, some people, when I say track, they think of a spreadsheet and they have to track. I don't do that. I don't have time for that. But track your time. If you want to watch Netflix, there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to sit down and, and chillax for a minute, go right ahead. But it has to be part of your time, right? Mm -hmm. So if you say to yourself, you know what, from seven to nine, I'm watching Netflix with my better partner and we're going to make this happen. Perfect. But you've scheduled that time in. It is part of what you're doing. You know, it's already part of the goal that you are setting for the day, right? But mm -hmm. if you're just like wasting time and scrolling and three hours later, you look up and you're like, oh, no. I've wasted three hours on stupid TikTok videos. Well, you've also wasted three hours on achieving a goal that you really, really said you wanted, right? Yep. Time. Great point. Super important. Yeah. Great yeah. point. Great point. Okay. Yeah. Number seven hits me right in the heart and that's home. Mm. Because I've always believed in like your home is your castle. Everything about you starts there. Yeah. And your comfort level starts and ends there, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you say about home? You know, I want you to really ask yourself, everybody who's listening, if are you living in the right city? Are you living in the right neighborhood? Are you living in the best house or apartment? And I don't mean the best, like, oh, the best. I mean, like the best for you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because think about your goals and think about what they are, right? So if I want to become a real estate agent, say in Arizona, but I live in Connecticut, that's not really going to work. Right. Right. So I really need to think about if I want to be a real estate agent and I know Arizona's booming right now and I want to be a part of Arizona. I really got to think about where's home for me, where home should be for me. And maybe if I wanted to do this in Arizona, I really need to move to Arizona to be a part of the goal that I'm trying to create. Right. Mm -hmm. So I know not right. everybody has the funds or the availability to just get up and move to another state. But you could at least ask in the state, meaning in the mind state, in the body state, in the state that you're in, am I home? Is this home and this, is it conducive to where it is I want to be and what goal I want to reach? We don't often think about that. But if you're in an environment that is super toxic, right, and you're trying to create this goal of positivity and gaining wisdom or whatever it is this goal is for you, and you're in a state or in a home of toxicity, that's not congruent. Mm -hmm. you, it's not going to be easy, not that it's impossible, but it's gonna be like super duper hard for you to get to the goal that you wanna to get to if you're still in toxicity when you're trying to create something different, right? And so you should ask yourself questions like, where should I be living in the city? Where should I be living in the country? You know, what would be where I feel congruent to what I want in my life? You know, is it East Coast? Is it West Coast? Is it North? Is it South? Is it a condo? Is it a farm? You know, mm -hmm. like if you're living in a little apartment building, but you're wanting a homestead, it's going to be hard to do in an apartment building, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you have to think about home. What is home? Home is where you really feel at peace. You're congruent to, to your life. You're congruent to your values. You're congruent to your, you know, relationships. And you want to live fully in present where you want to go now and where you want to go in life, right? So home is, I know it's where the heart is, but where's your heart? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. You what made a... me look at that differently too, by the way, because all I thought about was inside my home, how mm -hmm. that's a comfort level and so forth, but outside, like where the home actually is, yeah. <laughs> huge. Yeah. 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 That hits me good because I, you know, I lived in California for a while. I love San Diego. It's one of the, my favorite cities on earth that I've lived in. But the business that I wanted to build would have been a lot harder there. I'm from North Atlanta in the suburbs. And so I made a conscious decision to come back and build the business that I wanted here. And had I not done that, odds are I wouldn't have met Tanya. Wow. And, uh, and so that really does, you know, hit home because I had to make that conscious decision mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then what about career? Oh, yeah. Right. So, you know, I think that most people think that they have to go ahead and quit their job to start something else, to start their business or a different career or something like that. And you need to ask yourself, what are you pursuing really, right? Because say you're an entrepreneur at heart or you want to start a side gig, whatever that is, you have to start asking yourself those kind of questions like, is this job that I'm in or the career that I'm in really what I want to do? Am I making enough money? 
in this career? Is this even congruent to my life? Is this is this what I want? Or is the company that I'm working with aligned with my values? Um, that's a huge thing right now. People are aligning their whole life with their values. Are they trying to anyway? Because they're trying to figure out what those values are. And they're trying to work with companies that align with those values. That's why you're seeing this big shift in big corporations, right? That they're trying to be more inclusive and they're trying to, to have more time off for people. And even in the career space I'm in, which is the culinary field, right? In that field, I'm a director of culinary. And in that field, I deal with a lot of restaurant owners and restaurants and stuff that are now saying, okay, how do I keep my employees? Most of them don't even have a value system, really. Mm -hmm. But they're realizing, wait a minute, that person's not just a cook. That's an actual human being. And they want to align their careers and their visions and their values with what I'm presenting here in this restaurant or whatever, right? I'm realizing and seeing a lot of that right now. So if you need to be free during the day to pursue your goals, is your career or your job aligning with that? Does it allow for that to happen? Right. So career is super important. And I know a touchy subject for some people because they don't know exactly what they're doing right now with their lives or where they're going with their lives. But you have to think about if your job, your career is actually supporting the goals that you want to go to. And I'm not telling you to go quit your job tomorrow. I'm telling you to start asking yourself, what does this mean for me, this career? Right. I've met doctors that I've worked with in my coaching program that all they wanted to do is be artists, right? Mm -hmm. But they didn't even pick up a paper still because they're so busy being doctors. So then we had to work through that. What does that mean for you? What is that? What is, how does that look? And the truth is, is a lot of them end up finding that happy peace, that joy in that career that they love because they ask themselves the question. So just start there. Ask yourself the question. Where do you want in your career? How do you align? Yeah. I I love it. Great areas of life to conquer. Yeah. <laughs> great, great advice, Nina. Thank great you. advice. Absolutely. As we expected. All right. We got one final question for you. Sure. Uh, we ask of our guests, if our listeners have the freedom to visit anywhere in the world, which place would you recommend to them and why? Mm, that's a great question. What place would I recommend to them and why? I'm trying to think of like the little bit of places I've been to that I've really, really enjoyed in my life. I'm a cruiser, right? I like to go on cruises. And so I like to hit the ABC islands, you know, Aruba and all of those. And so I think any island with extremely see-through blue water is the place for me. So <laughs> no, I mean, I, you know, so I love the Caribbean islands because of that. And the people are kind and every island that I've been through in the Caribbean, they're all very kind. The food is amazing. And the water, I mean, you could see 20 feet down. I mean, you can't beat it. Right. So yes. that would be my answer to that. I like it. That's perfect. It's a very... yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah. I love that clear, crystal clear water. You can see mm. 40, 50 feet down. Yeah. It's a very it's peaceful feeling, very connected to nature. At that yeah. point, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, Nina, the sad time has come, <laughs> but tell everybody the best way to reach you if they want to learn more about you or do business with you. Yeah. So you can reach me at ninaperez.com. Also, my podcast, which is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. You can find that everywhere. I'm honestly, I'm omnipresent. You can find me anywhere. So Nina spelled N E E N A Perez.com. So there we go. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Nina. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Brought to you by BrandFace, the only comprehensive personal brand building system across the globe.